You know, here's the thing uh, that 622 does. Um, when you were a kid and you were learning grammar and you create a model that says, okay, well, all the elements of a grammatically correct sentence are all right here in this sentence, or we're missing something. We're missing the verb when you diagram a sentence that doesn't have a verb in it. With leadership, it's much the same way. Um, you can see a fragmentary leader out there in the field, and you say, you know, there's just something not right about that leader. He's missing something, but what is it? I can't put my finger on it. And if you go back and you read FM 6-22 and you look at the leader requirements model, you can say, ah, well, there it is. I think it's mostly important to Army leadership because it's the, the one document, the one manual, it's only one of three that the Chief of Staff of the Army personally signed, so it's important to him to get the Army leadership right. But why it's important is it describes what we want leaders to be, know, and do explicitly. It's for everyone. It's not just an officer thing or a senior NCO thing. It's for everybody who joins the Army and develops as a leader. You know, I, I do think that uh, what defines the contemporary operating environment and likely the future operating environment is a degree of complexity and uncertainty that uh, we didn't experience in the early part of my career. Uh, you know, we used to prepare ourselves for an enemy that was relatively easy to template. You know, the motorized rifle regiment would introduce itself on the battlefield in very predictable ways. And um, now, I think we would certainly uh, admit that our enemy introduces itself, uh, whoever our enemy happens to be, in ways that are almost untemplatable. And so what we need is we need uh, a group of leaders, that's officers, non-commissioned officers, uh, warrant officers, and civilian leaders, because of course we're, we're in this thing together, who um, can adapt when we get the future, you know, a few degrees of separation off from what we anticipated it to be. Six dash 22 is resident throughout our entire non-commissioned officer education system. In structured self-development, it is the transition between the institutional and operational army. And in our non-commissioned officer education, PME or professional military education, it's in every level of our course. The warrior leader course, the advanced leader course, the senior leader course, and the United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy. It's the cornerstone of our education system. I think that uh, what doctrine does for you and the ability to gain from other people's experiences. We have probably the most experienced operational force that we have had, certainly in my 32 years in the Army. But the reality is that no one is likely to go back into combat in the same job that they had last time. So how do you learn from the experiences of others, learn from the best practices of others? And I think that having it established clearly in a doctrine provides a framework for your thinking that allows you to sort of broaden your approach so that you're prepared not for the last time you went for war, but for the next time you go to war. Good leaders are leaders of their organization. Uh, they're leaders of the immediate people around them, but they're also part of the greater leadership of the institution uh, called the Army and the Department of Defense. And so we have multiple requirements for leaders. We need leaders to get the mission done here and today, uh, but we also need to make sure that they have ownership and stewardship of the institution of the Army and that they are developing the future leaders of tomorrow. They are developing uh, their subordinates to take their place. You know, you ask a soldier what he or she should be, and they would say technically and tactically proficient. Well, you get into the current manual, and it also t says that that isn't deep enough. That today we should have people that are culturally uh, proficient, that we should have people that are understand the political environment and people who understand the joint environment. After myself being in combat for such a long time over the last seven or eight years, the one lesson that came back to me uh, quite regularly is the necessity to continue to learn. And you can't ever forget that no, ma no matter how senior you are, no matter how many operational experiences you have, it's about this combination of the training that you've received, the operational deployments that you've conducted, and your own education. And it's a combination of those three 
that help to develop our leaders. What we want to do is we want to use that then to, to develop broad leaders, those who can solve complex problems in complex situations. Because the world we live in today will get more complex by the minute. And we have to be able to execute sound decisions. We have to be able to lead soldiers. We have to be able to uh, lead ideas and thoughts into the future.